Hello everybody and welcome back to the WordPress for Designers video screencast on blog.themeforest.net. I am Drew Douglas and today we are going to tackle day 15 of our WordPress for Designers series. So uh, we've talked a bit about our slider and our jQuery slider um, and that's what we're going to do today. So uh, let's Let's go over a quick overview of what we hope to accomplish, and, uh, and then we'll get started. Um, we last left off with our theme looking something like this, and we need to fit um, some images in here, um, recent portfolio images is one that could be used, but we need some kind of images uh, on the left here um, that can slide and kind of show our recent work, and then, you know, we just, a basic text, uh, you know, portfolio description up here, something like, uh, you know, please feel free to browse our recent work on the left. Whatever. We need something that's going to, uh, you know, give our, give our end users a nice little visual um, idea of some of our recent work or recent images in a nice slider fashion. So I've looked around and I wanted one that was just like really simple just something that can just slide our images around that's you know that's all we need with maybe an arrow or, or a counter or something and I found uh, by Nathan Searless I'm sure I'm saying that wrong um, but anyway it's called the jQuery looped slider and of course I'll have the link for all of you below um, but if you go to the page you can kind of you can download it and you can see some examples under examples and um, some of the basic markup that's required and we're going to get into all of that and uh, actually add a few more things we need and then the basic CSS that's needed um, for the markup and then uh, you know how to kick off the whole script so that's what we're going to cover today and this is going to be uh, a lot of it is just going to be getting our uh, our theme to look how we need it to uh, with the CSS and while at the same time making the slider work um, so yeah that's what we're gonna do the, the the trickiest part about today is when when you use these sliders um, almost you know hundred percent of the time they're going to inject some kind of uh, some kind of styling or some kind of positioning uh, via the JavaScript so they can get it to slide properly um, which is great but that also puts in the challenge of making sure that uh, you can get you know those styles and the and what's needed for the slider to fit into our style so we're gonna need to use some uh, absolute positioning tricks today and a few other things to get the buttons working um, and that's what we will we will tackle one thing at a time and it, it's uh, not as difficult as it sounds so that said uh, go ahead and download uh, the slider um, the looped jQuery slider if you're following along at home and we're gonna move on so open up whatever text editor you've been using. If you've been following along, you know that I'm a big fan of Coda. And so that's what I'll be using. Okay, if we take a look at our basic theme files here on the left, um, we'll remember that we have a lot of our CSS and image related um, things in our style folder. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is upload some images I've already prepared um, for this slider under the folder of demo images to the style folder. So now we have a new folder um, we have a new folder in our style folder, a new directory uh, with four demo images of them and I uh, made them of animals because that seemed like the fun thing to do at the time. Um, these are all courtesy of the uh, Theme Forest asset library if you're looking for somewhere to download free images to use and follow along but you can see they're all the same size and I figured it was better that I prepare them now than uh, bore you guys through that process. So we've prepared some basic images for our slider. Um, now what we want to do is go ahead and uh, add all the necessary files that we need. So I'll just go ahead and do this now. I'm going to download the looped slider uh, JavaScript here and click OK. Unzip that. Alrighty. Well, it looks like I already had it there, but alright. 
what I'm going to do is go over to style folder now and I'm going to create another folder and we're going to keep all of our JavaScript that we use for our theme uh, in this folder. So I'm going to call it JS uh, for JavaScript folder. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to open up my loop slider and uh, I'm going to rename it loop slider dot JavaScript and put it into my JavaScript folder. Oops. Ah, come on. Man, I'm just messing up everything right now. Okay, let's try that again. Put it into my, there we go, JavaScript folder. Okay, so now we have uh, the one script that we need. Let's go ahead and get started with the basic markup, and we'll come back and, uh, and we'll worry about linking to our scripts later. So we have all of our necessary um, slider information is going to be in the featured section. And what we're going to do today, and this is uh, why this will be two parts, is we're going to hard code it here, meaning we're going to have all the content and the actual text uh, hard coded into this file today so we can see if our slider works. And then uh, when we come back for day 16, we are going to actually look at how to pull that information out of the WordPress admin panel. So all the user would have to do would go, uh, you know, to WP admin, and we'll have a certain section there for featured, you know, uh, portfolio images or something like that. And all they'll have to do is click add a new image, and it'll automatically be added. But today we're just going to hard code everything, and uh, we're going to kind of look at the markup we need to get started. Okay, so I can remove my little spacer ampersand there. And now we're going to want a, uh, a little info here that's going to be on the right. So we're going to give a div class of slide info. Close it off, and I'll try to keep this as organized as I can for all of you. Um, give it a little h3 tag, something like our, you know, our portfolio and then just uh, you know some dummy text I guess I could get some lips I'm ready but I'll just say something like uh, um, to the left you will find some of our recent work uh, you may click on the buttons below to view more of our work or our entire portfolio. Anyway, something simple. Um, you know, obviously, whatever you want to say. Okay, so we have that inside our div class of info. Um, what we also want is another paragraph, and inside that, some strong tags. And we're going to do this so we can exactly match our design as it was. And it's going to say interface plus design plus CSS slash uh, XHTML. Okay. And if you don't know why we put that there, that's just kind of how the PSD had some of its text, and you'll see how we're going to style those strong tags um, uh, in just a little later. Okay, let's move on. The next thing we need is our main container. Um, we need to give it a div class of container and you need to remember that some of the markup here and the names of our markup is important. If we go back to Firefox and uh, onto the loop slider homepage, if we scroll down to markup, this is the required markup, you'll see that we actually do need a class uh, named container and the script is gonna is gonna look and use that class to manipulate it. Um, so we have a div class of container and now inside of this div class we're going to have another uh, nested class called uh, slides. And again, if you need to remember any of this, you can reference the, uh, the uh, page here that I've linked to below. Okay, so now we have our div class of slides. This is going to hold all of our images that we want to slide through. Um, you know, generally this would be your recent work portfolio images, or in our case, cute pictures of koalas and kangaroos and other cool Australian animals. Um, so now what we need to do is add the images. Like I said, um, in day 16 we will learn how to do this uh, 
and how to pull it out of WordPress with a you know a custom query. But for now, we're just going to hard code them in so we can get our slider working because we want to take it one thing at a time. Uh, one more thing: all of the images inside the class of slides need to have just a, a blank div wrapper around them, and this is so the script can uh, can properly execute some of uh, some jQuery that it needs to. So we'll say, uh, you know, image source, and we'll just do this for all of them. We'll say WP content themes paper business style demo images and then uh, the first one is cyan kangaroo dot jpeg and uh, I'm sorry I didn't write these out earlier but you know it can't ever hurt to kind of refresh yourself um, and remember what kind of path you're looking for when you're working for WordPress sometimes when you you know force yourself to write you know hand write these paths it actually is kind of a nice refresher of how the whole uh, WordPress directory is set up but anyway I've copied the first one so now I can come in here and say image source paste it and the second image was called uh, koala cyan koala dot jpeg uh, the third image and I only have four so no worries third image is the image of our uh, kookaburra, if that's how you say it. It's a crazy little animal. Kookaburra.jpg. Ah, whatever. And our last one, I believe it's that crazy cat. Yep. All right. And her last one is Scott uh, Scott Wills underscore cat dot JPEG. And for the alt text, we'll just put cat. Okay, so there we've uh, put in all of our images now into our class of slides. So we need to uh, move on, and now we're going to have a uh, we're going to have an area for both of our buttons. And we're going to call these. Uh, two different buttons because they have two different features and background images. So we'll say div class of featured button and again you will see what all of this markup is for uh, when we do our CSS. href uh, for now it doesn't need to link to anything. It needs to have a class of previous And don't forget to give it a title, I guess, previous. And inside this, we'll just put PREV, like the theme says. And we need another anchor tag. It uh, doesn't need to link anywhere with a class of next. If you didn't guess, this is going to be our previous and next button to continue the slider. Uh, next. Okay, like so. And next we need a uh, portfolio button. This is the button that says view full portfolio. Uh, so we're going to give a div class of portfolio button. And inside we're just going to have an anchor. And title is going to be for now view full portfolio. And inside for the anchor text we'll just say view portfolio okay believe it or not we're almost done with the uh, markup for our slider we need one more thing and uh, this needs to be an unordered list with a class of pagination okay and we're gonna put um, like I said for now we're just gonna hard we're gonna hand code this and we're just gonna give it some anchor tags you know slider one we'll have one and we can just kinda copy and paste here to get four of them two three four two three four and the same thing for the text okay and for our last one we actually want uh, we need to we want to add one more uh, list item here 
and it's going to have a class of total, T-O-T-A-L. And it's going to have an anchor tag inside of that as well, title of total, and it will say out of four. And you will see why we're doing this um, I mean, just a bit when we get to the CSS and start styling it. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And that is all of the markup we need for our slider. Um, it might seem like it's a little bit, but it's really not that much. Um, just a basic kind of container for our images, a few of our buttons, and then some basic pagination is really all we have going, um, going on here. So now we want to, um, now we need to kind of, let's take a look at how that looks. And uh, if, you, if you don't remember, if we go to front page, which is what our home page is, we're including the uh, featured section.php file, which is all of this markup right here. So we're including our slider there. So let's go ahead and have a look at uh, what that looks like. And like I said, this will not be pretty, so uh, no worries. Okay, you can see we got, we got stuff going on everywhere, all over the place. And that's because we haven't done any of the necessary um, CSS uh, steps yet. And then also we haven't uh, actually kicked off the uh, script. So let's start with some of the CSS. We can go ahead and close out front page dot PHP and scroll down to let's see where it says featured styles and then we're going to uh, just kind of add an area for slider styles. Alright and I'll make sure to take my time on some of the uh, the more important styles and then the ones that are just kind of for uh, presentation I'm, I won't take as much time on you, you'll you'll understand at least uh, the basic ones um, but yeah let's start with uh, container remember we have a class of container and we have necessary styles here that we need to give it so for container we're gonna say uh, width 500, height 375 pixels, overflow is going to be hidden and we'll talk about that later that's important and we need to set its position to relative okay moving on to our slides class and again this is all just necessary markup um, that we're putting in from right here to fit our needs Slides is going to be position absolute, and uh, top is going to be zero, left zero. Okay, now let's do slides div. Any div that's within our slides uh, class. Again, position absolute. Top. 30 pixels. This will give it some uh, our images some space from the top and you know some kind of uh, padding like width 500 pixels and display is going to be none and that's because the JavaScript is going to handle uh, the displaying of the uh, different images for when they need to slide. Okay let's say slides and then image. So any image uh, tag within the div uh, within the class of slides. Let's give it some basic padding on the left and we'll say about 30 pixels and cursor is going to be pointer because they're going to be able to actually click on the images and uh, go to the next one if they want. And we'll go ahead and save there and uh, and move on. Let's see. Let's see what that gives us. And again, uh, don't freak out until uh, we've completed this because this is going to kind of be a mess. Okay, you can see it kind of got rid of our images, and that's to be expected for now. Okay, we're going to skip down here, and we're going to uh, leave some space for a few other things um, that we're going to come back to. And we're going to say slide info. If you need a little refresher on our markup here, slide info is the div class that's holding all of our uh, 
our like our text information, like welcome to our portfolio, uh, etc. Slide info is going to have a width, whoops, of 365 pixels. I'm going to float it to the right so it can be, uh, so it makes sure the text shows up to the right of our images. We don't want them uh, the text right behind our images. Uh, we want a font size, 13 pixels. And we want to give it some basic margins. So we're going to say 25 pixels on the top, 30 pixels on the right, none on the bottom, none on the left. OK. So we got some basic uh, slide info styles down. Now, what about our H3 tag? Uh, you'll recall that we need to style that. Um, this would be the little R portfolio text right here. That needs to be blue and a lot bigger. So we're going to say slide info H3 color is going to be, let me look at my notes here, number 224E70 for the hex value. Font size, we're going to change to 27 pixels. And uh, the margins, give it zero pixels on the top, none on the right, but 10 pixels on the bottom. Alrighty, so let's save that and let's kind of refresh and see how we're looking. Okay, um, it's looking slowly but surely, it's looking better. You can see our text here now is on the right. Um, it's difficult to see because it's still white, but you know we have our images that will be here on the left, and now our text description of our portfolio here, and our buttons will uh, eventually appear down here. Um, so yeah, let's keep working on that. Slide info P for our paragraph tags. We need to style that now. Uh, we're going to say line height is going to be 21 pixels. Margin uh, we're going to give it uh, about 10 pixels on the top, none on the right. 20 on the bottom and none on the left. Alrighty. And let's see, let's uh, go ahead and save that. We'll come back to the color. We're going to go slide info P strong. And now we're going to take care of those strong tags that we had in our description. Now uh, we're going to change the color to hex value of 215379. It's kind of a darker uh, blue. Font size, uh, 15 pixels, and font weight, normal. Okay, and if you're wondering how I'm getting, uh, I got a, an email the other day of how I'm getting these color values easily. Um, the easiest way to do it is if you have Photoshop, you can just open up the eyedropper tool, and, uh, and that will allow you um, to pick out any color you want on any kind of text or or uh, really anything so okay now let's uh, let's change the color for the paragraph tags inside the featured section um, we can actually just scroll up to featured section here and kind of knock it all out at once and um, take advantage of you know the ca cascading style sheet features and just change the color to 626262 uh, for the featured section ID div so if we refresh, okay, you can see this is the strong tag that we had earlier um, that I was talking about. And you can kind of see how that works. Um, it, we change it to a different color and a slightly bigger font size. We have our description and our portfolio. So it's, it's getting there. It's, it's a little bit closer than we were. So now let's pick up where we left off and where we left a little bit of space for ourselves. And this is where we're going to handle the pagination, um, which is the unordered list, and also how we're going to handle the buttons, which is going to require a little bit of uh, tricky positioning work, but uh, it's nothing we can't handle. So let's do uh, let's do this. Let's do unit uh, unordered list. Something I tend to do is instead of calling a, a UL tag an an unordered list. I call it a unit list. I do not. I don't know why I do that, but I say it all the time. 
So uh, if you catch me saying that, just know that I mean an unordered list. Anyway, unordered list uh, with a class of pagination, and for any list item in that, we are going to say position absolute top 241 uh, font size oops, I'm sorry left 520 font size is going to be 13 pixels and we're going to actually set it to display none so if I save this come back over here okay see the numbers one two three and four that's our little um, those are our list uh, classes and, and well so is the out of four um, and if we refresh we're actually not displaying them by default and you see how we're gonna use uh, CSS to kinda do a little tricky fix here it's gonna be nice but um, you'll see what I mean shortly after that we're gonna say uh, Corner list pagination with a uh, list of total where the list uh, item has a class of total. We're going to display block. Whoops. And we're going to say left 527 pixels. And remember, a lot of this is because of the way the slider, why we need to position these things, is because the slider is setting some things uh, relative and absolutely, and we need to get them uh, looking like we have it in the PSD while the slider still works. So we have to use a little bit of positioning and uh, display tricks to kind of get around it. But uh, I think you'll find it all comes together really, really nicely here. Okay, so we've got that. That was for our total, which is the out of four list item. Um, like one out of four, two out of four, three out of four, you're gonna see what that does. We're gonna use a kind of a cool CSS technique here to show that. Um, next we're gonna say uh, unordered list with a class of pagination list item with a class of active. And this is going to be the current uh, slider number. So like one, two, three, or four, or however many, whatever number the image it's on. And we're just gonna say display block, because we uh, do want to show the active one. And what I mean by that is, see uh, our list items here, the one, two, three, and four. When our slider script um, actually does the work, it's going to add a class of active to whichever one of these it's on. So if we're on image two, this list item is going to have a class of active, and therefore we want to show the two um, because we only want to show what um, active you know slider image we're on that way since we're displaying the total which is out of four and the only active one we're gonna get the one out of four and then when we click the next one it's gonna change to two out of four since only the active class is being shown And if that doesn't make sense yet uh, it will very shortly uh, let's continue on unordered list pagination uh, list class a with any anchor links just need to do some uh, cosmetics here. 9393. Nine, nine, okay, so let's save that and see what we got. Okay, so you can see we have out of four showing up here. Um, you're going to see how that comes into play shortly. Okay, let's handle um, our button now. Remember, our uh, we have a class named Featured Button. We're going to do some work here on it. We're going to say background URL. Oh, I'm sorry, we want to set that to transparent first. URL is going to equal style images slider underscore button dot JPEG. No repeat. And scroll. Okay, it's going to have a width of 128 pixels, a height of 30, and in the featured button this is going to be the, the little button where they can click next or previous um, for the slider to kind of navigate through the slider images. So this is an important little um, piece of CSS. Position is going to be absolute, um, top is going to be 233, and of course I've already made these uh, measurements beforehand, so 
Don't worry if you don't understand them, it's just a matter of getting things lined up and working with our slider. And lastly, a font size of 13 pixels. Next, our featured button A, this is also just a little bit of cosmetics, is going to be a color of 038A5. Uh, Alrighty, let's go ahead and save that, refresh, and see where we're at. Okay, so things are starting to look closer. We have our previous and next button, um, but it's still not quite there yet. So we're going to keep going with our styles. And now we're going to say uh, portfolio button. Which is actually the button which is going to say uh, view all of our portfolio. And believe it or not, the background is slightly different um, than the featured button. So we'll say background, transparent, URL, style, uh, images, portfolio, underscore button dot JPEG, no repeat, and scroll. Some basic background properties there. Um, has a width of 129 pixels, a height of 31 pixels, Position, of course, is absolute. Top, 233. Left, 560. And font size, 13. I probably could have figured out a way to have these share class for some of the more common um, styles that we're using here, but, you know, it's okay. Portfolio button A. I promise you guys we're getting very close to having a, uh, a working slider here. Um, our color is going to be 0380A5. And we're actually going to need to position this sum. Say position, absolute, uh, top 8 pixels, uh, and left is going to be 17 pixels. Alrighty, and you'll see how that comes into play. We'll go ahead and save, refresh, and take a look at what we got. Okay, we have a nice little view portfolio button there. Um, you can see how we kind of worked out the positioning to get it to where we want it. And um, we're almost done with our styles. So um, the last few things we need to style are just these little next and previous buttons. So let's do um, you'll remember we have a class of next and previous, so we'll do position. And since we have all this, uh, we can take advantage of our relative positioning by using absolute. We can get it exactly where we want it to in the featured section. Um, left, 54 pixels and a top of 7 pixels. And again, I've already just kind of worked these out when I was uh, going over and preparing for this uh, for day 15. And for our previous class, we're going to do the same thing, except different uh, top and left values. Say top 7 pixels, left uh, 54 pixels. Save it, come back, refresh. Um, oops, sorry, I duplicated that, didn't I? <laughs> left uh, needs to be 15 pixels, not 54. And there we go, and it looks just like, um, well, just like it should, really. Um, and so you see that we have our out of four, but we're kind of missing our little one, two, three, or four here. And that's because we haven't kicked off our script, and it hasn't added the necessary um, classes and things yet. So believe it or not, that is, we are done with our CSS. We have all of our styles in place, um, so we need to do a few more things, and then we can get our slider script working. So now what we're going to do is um, we've added our functions, or our, excuse me, our loop slider to our JavaScript folder. Now we need to um, add another file here, and this is going to be called functions.javascript. And we're going to open this up, and now we're going to do some basic jQuery here to kick off our slider and tell it, um, you know, kind of tell it on what element to have a, f a slider on. So we'll say function. Okay, and inside of this, we will say 
our ID of featured section. Okay, so if I come over here to our featured section, this is our main uh, div class. And then I can say dot looped. Oops. Make sure I spell this right. Looped uh, slider. And that's all we need to do is call it like so. Okay, so we're going to save that. Okay, and now what we want to do is we need to link to these from our header file. So, we'll come over here and after all of our style sheets and all that, um, first we need to link to jQuery. Um, if I go over here and type in to Google, Google Ajax uh, APIs, and I go to the first hit, oops, yeah, here we go, to the libraries and go to jQuery, we can actually let Google host it for us if I copy the path here. And this way, um, you know, if we're letting Google host it for us, we'll, we'll get any uh, cached versions from them will already be served to the user so they won't have to re-download it. And it's just kind of a speed improvement and an easier way to do things. So I'll do script type equals text JavaScript source equals and then the Google link that we just uh, copied and pasted. Now we need to link to two more scripts. We need to link to our um, looped slider jQuery script and then our function script. So we'll do text slash JavaScript source. And it's just going to be, uh, let's see here. Whoops. WP dash content themes. Uh, paper business style JS and looped uh, slider dot JS. Hopefully, I spelled all of that right. And lastly, script type uh, is text slash JavaScript. Source is equal to WP content themes paper business style js and uh, functions dot javascript okay so now we've added those um, to our header and we'll come back and check it in firebug okay so we go to html check out our head and we come down here and we go to scripts we can see that a jQuery is showing up uh, we can see our loop slider script is showing up and we can see that our little functions um, script is also showing up okay and uh, if you click on that you can see our little sliders working um, probably a good one I'm gonna go back and add some more padding here on the left um, you know obviously not a huge mark or just a little vanity deal but, um, you know, our slider is actually working now. So um, we have our featured section markup, necessary styles, which is really the hardest and most important part um, in our slider. And like I said, uh, I'll add more padding uh, and kind of style this up a little better for day 16. Um, but did you guys notice the three out of four here, how that's shown up? Four out of four, one out of four, um, etc. That's kind of a cool little CSS uh, trick we're using. If we come back to our CSS file and we look into um, our active one, we can see we have it displayed to block, which means we are showing, uh, and you remember we're not showing by default any of the list items, only the ones with the class of active or total. And so what this is doing, if we come into, you know, refresh and come into Firebug, see if I can inspect this over here okay you can see that the uh, the jQuery has added a class of active to whatever the active image is um, so if I click next now it's changed the active class to the next um, you know list item that we have so you know th there's our, our basic basic uh, slider hard-coded of course um, like I said, ideally you'd put images of your portfolio, other things here. They can also click on the image too. Um, we can change all kinds of settings when we get more into this. 
Um, but it works like it was designed to. It works to show off the recent stuff in the portfolio. Now what we're going to do on day 16 is we're going to come back in here. We're going to create kind of a, a custom query up here at the top, a WordPress query, and we're going to pull out information that they've inputted in images. They've inputted um, from the admin section, and we're going to have them automatically added to the markup here. So the, the, uh, the end user, whoever ends up using this theme, will not actually have to come into here and they won't have to hard code anything. They'll be able to do it from the um, back of you know the WP um, admin section of WordPress. And that is going to be what, uh, the little um, trickier part. So um, hopefully you guys kind of got the basics in, of down of uh, you know creating and implementing a slider in WordPress. Um, a lot of it is just getting used to CSS and making sure that you know all about you know positioning and and just the box model and how things are going to show because um, the hardest part about preparing this was just getting everything to show up where you needed it to um, at the same time not breaking the slider and the necessary slider um, CSS that almost all of them require. Um, so I, I think that's where I'll leave off today. Um, whoops. It's going to, like always, uh, please encourage you guys to, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Theme Forest blog. Um, it'll help keep me employed. It'll help keep us happy and bringing you guys all these videos. So if you want to subscribe, um, that'd be really appreciated. Um, any questions or comments you guys have, you know, feel free to let me know below. And like I said, day 16, we will uh, be writing some really uh, cool queries here to pull out um, our slider information from the user. So, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I hope I didn't forget anything. And, uh, you know, happy WordPress coding, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.